Shalom Chavim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And you know, friends, I've gotten a lot of requests to talk about what is going on in Afrin since the Turkish government has launched even a ground invasion against the Kurds up in the northern part of Syria there. Uh, and I got a lot of questions about it as well because seemingly it looks like that Russia may have bombed in the Syrian government as well, bombing a road that kind of slowed down this uh, advance of the Turkish uh, military that was moving from Idlib also towards Afrin. Now there is a lot of conflicting uh, reports on that, but one thing that I did find out as I spoke to my own source on the ground in Syria this morning, asking him what his thoughts were about this, he sent me this link right here from Janine Musa, uh, a video here that actually shows, uh, and by the way, that is a uh, that is Al-Qaeda member there in the video. The guy that's reporting is using his cell phone. If you look at the shadow on the ground, you can tell he's just holding a cell phone up, uh, videoing this. But they wanted you to get an idea of the size of the convoy that was coming through, at least this girl that posted this, of the Turkish military that is moving in the direction of Afrin. Now, the convoy does come to a screeching halt, and there was all types of conflicting reports as to why. There, there were uh, three of the vehicles were destroyed, uh, in, uh, in route there, some, some saying they drove over a landmine, their uh, Turkish uh, writers were saying that Russia bombed them, uh, but according to what we were finding out from Janine Musa on this, uh, some of the port report, some of the inside story that she's saying from Syria as well, is that the Syrian and the Russian government was actually bombing a little, uh, little area there not far that was actually in between where the Turkish military was coming from and where they were headed to. So they actually had to come to a halt as a result of that. All right, now, but really when we're looking at all this, and to kind of give you a little bit more of a bird's eye view here, let's, let's look here. We're looking at Afrin right here on the map here. This is Turkey all the way around there. Uh, of course, you have Idlib further to the south. This is where uh, the, uh, the Turkish forces were actually coming from, was from Idlib area, from that Idlib province down here towards the south. And they were headed up to Afrin to strike the Kurds from every direction. And it's really a major issue here because as I watch this unfold, I'm thinking, why didn't President Bashar al-Assad intervene? And of course, we, we spoke with our, with, with, with our good friend of ours there on the ground inside of Syria, and he had said to me from the beginning that the reason why is because they're trying to negotiate a peace agreement between the two of them where they can work together. And they just can't reach that hurdle. The Syrian government, before this attack, was trying to get the Kurds to allow the Syrian military to take over Afrin, and that would be the one thing that would stop Turkey from being able to come in. But I think it's a much bigger campaign also, because after all, we also see that Germany has supplied the Turkish government with their leopard tanks, and those tanks have actually crossed over the border against the, the citizens of Afrin as well. And I say citizens, I know there's Kurdish fighters there too, but it is the citizens that are paying a heavy toll in this fight. Over a hundred civilians that have been reportedly been killed, and some three, four hundred uh, uh, Kurdish uh, fighters have been killed as well. But Russia nor Syria has stepped in to change anything, and it all has to do because they haven't come to that agreement. And yet the Kurdish fighters have been one of the best ground assets against ISIS from the very beginning. Well, that would explain why the United States never really came involved to help them out in the beginning, because ISIS was in fact created by President Barack Hussein Obama and others in the region there helping to try to topple President Bashar al-Assad. When President Trump come along, even though the deep state has their own agenda, he kind of always speaks about trying to do just the opposite. And in fact, when he began to work with the Kurds on the eastern side of the Euphrates, and let's kind of back this out to kind of give you a better idea there, that's way over here. This is where they began to work, mainly for uh, Al Raqqa right here, and also Deir ez -Zord, where they were trying to gain control of that region there. ISIS was being defeated by Russia and Syria. Then the United States began to try to take control of this area and using the Kurdish fighters, finally they step up for the Kurdish fighters. The rest of the times, it was just like, let the Kurds bleed, we could really care less. You know, that's really sad, but that's the way the Kurds have been treated by the United States. Even Russia, 
In fact, if anybody, you know, we see that President Trump is talking about trying to make a safe zone and pretty much when he talks about this 30,000 strong security force to protect the borders of Syria from Iraq and Turkey, which he backtracked on the next day. You know, the deep state really just pulls uh, President Trump's chain. I hate to say it. You know, there's a lot of things I like about President Trump, but believe me, he is definitely being jerked around by the deep state and does exactly what they want. I think sometimes it's just different factions of the Illuminati or different factions of these demons that are in control of the governments uh, that are fighting over what they actually really want. But, you know, they say that they're trying to help the Kurds. Get a homeland indirectly, they're doing. But that's really just for, of course, our interest back home here in the United States. Why? Because we are the biggest oil guzzling nation in the world. And as those supplies begin to dwindle, we have to take over lands. Maybe this is why we had to take down, what was it, seven countries in five years, but it didn't happen that way, General Wesley Clark brought out. But nonetheless, we do have 2,000 U.S. soldiers stationed in Mumbai here, and Turkey is telling the U.S., get out or die with them. What kind of NATO partner is that? I think that Turkey is actually getting ready and weakening the northern border of Syria here because they still have their eye on Damascus. And as I said from the beginning, it was a staged coup. So they've got to weaken all this area here so they get ready to come down here and take down Damascus. That's really my thought. That's what the deep state really has in mind. Now, here's an interesting thought, though. I've mentioned to you guys before that Russia has always said good about the Kurds as well. This article right here on the Al Monitor I thought was interesting because on this particular article right here, it does bring up the fact that Russia was the one that actually pro pro uh, proposed the concept of including a Kurdish autonomy in a new Syrian constitution. Now, that doesn't mean a Syrian state, a Kurdish state, but autonomy to be able to govern their own affairs. That's about as fair as you can possibly get it. I mean, after all, make it kind of like the United States. You know, you're free. Believe and serve God the way you choose to serve him. And I appreciate the egalitarian side of the Kurdish people as well. As we see here in the article right here that was, uh, let me just show you this one here. This was written by Dilar, Dilar Darik. Forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, New Internationalist, uh, where the article was actually uh, published at, Utopia Disrupted, Turkey's Assault on Kurdish-Held Afrin. And of course, as, as she writes in here, one of the things that I really appreciate about her is, is that when she writes in here, she writes about that the Kurdish people is an egalitarian uh, people. And let me just see if I can find that part real quick. I want to read that to you. Let's just start off here. The Turkish state and pro-Turkish Free Syrian Army, the FSA troops, launched a cross-border military operation on the majority Kurdish region of Afrin and northwestern Syria. This invasion into another country is a blunt violation of international law and happens with little scrutiny, even in the international community's watches. Moreover, this declaration of war constitutes an atrocity against the same people that have formed the first line in the fight against ISIS, fascism, while building a democratic, secular, gender, egalitarian shelter for all communities amid war. Well, she's right about that. And I think this is one reason why the U.S. never came to the Kurds' age, because they were slowing down their own ISIS operation that was to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad. Remember John Kerry's comment on that leaked audio when he was talking to some of these Syrian operatives that were trying to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad? He made the comment that, well, we were just waiting because it looked like ISIS was just about ready to overthrow the country. He said, but something unexpected happened. Russia came in. Hmm. Russia derailed the ISIS movement. Now, of course, Russia does have their own national interests. And the one thing about Russia that I like about Russia is that President Putin makes it quite clear. We have our own national interests, and we're only asking that our national interests be respected. And, of course, his national interests were those gas fields off the coast of Syria. He had made a deal with President Bashar al-Assad before this war got going. And this is why Russia came in to defend its own national interests and to keep President Bashar al-Assad in power.
And quite frankly, President Bashar al-Assad is not the big bad boogeyman that the whole world is trying to make him look like. In his country, the Christians could live in peace and freedom, as well as the Muslims and even Jews. Oh, but no, we have to demonize him and make him look like he's the guy that gassed the entire country. Remember recently when we reported that Rex Tillerson was talking about uh, Russia is going to also have to bear responsibility for the actions of President Bashar al-Assad. Then he goes into this chemical attack issue. Well, you know what's interesting? There were others saying, well, that was that latest chemical attack that just happened in Syria. No, Rex Tillerson knew good and well that they had already did a little dirty trick that just got reported on Reuters exclusive. Test link Syrian government stockpile to the largest Syrian attack, sources are saying. And they're trying to say now that they have the proof that from the stockpiles of gas that was taken out of Syria was the actual ones that was used against the Syrian population in Damascus. Never mind the fact that Aaron Erdem, who also was a parliament member of the Turkish government, was standing before his own parliament with the full disclosure of all the information the sarin gas included with ISIS militants in Turkey getting ready to cross the border in Syria back in 2013. And the corruption of the government and the prime minister of the government at that time, which I believe was Aaron, uh, excuse me, uh, President Erdogan, allowed those militants to cross that border and shortly thereafter, and the judges were replaced, everything was dropped, take your sarin gas with you, and was used on a civilian population around Damascus where hundreds died. Thank you, ISIS. Thank you, Turkey for killing all the people in Damascus. Oh, and don't forget, they had to blame it on President Bashar al-Assad to make him look like the evil guy. You know, this is really unbelievable. Do people really believe this? I mean, British journalist Seymour Hirsch also uncovered the evidence that linked Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State at the time, of making sure that that gas came from a stockpile in a country that America had overthrown. Oh, but believe me, Russia is not allowed to be a part of any of the testing of the sarin gas because, after all, if you're going to concoct a story and make it a bunch of lies, you got to make sure that nobody else has their hands in except the people that will say, yes, sir. This is really a shame what's happening all over in Syria. So, the thing is, I'm sure the attacks on Syria Damascus are very near at hand. And this whole issue of Turkey crossing the border and NATO doing nothing about it and Russia being fooled into it is only a play. Don't worry, President Bashar al-Assad. They tar they're targeting Damascus in the very near future. But they'll, of course, blame it on you again, saying that you gassed your people. All the propaganda, and nobody pays attention. Anyway, Russia's role in Afrin depends on Turkey's true intention. Uh, I'm sorry, we'd already gone into this right here. Let's move on, guys, as we finish up today's news broadcast. Syria, Turkey's arrests hundreds of criticizing Afrin offensive. Hmm, looky there. See, President Erdogan, he does not allow freedom of speech. This is on the BBC, no less. Syria war. Turkey arrests hundreds for criticizing Afrin offensive. More than 300 people have been arrested in Turkey after uh, posting messages online criticizing the country's military offensive across the border in Syria. The message condemning the Turkish military operation to push a Kurdish militia out of Syria's northern region of Afrin were posted on social media. The users were detained for spreading terror propaganda. You express your discontent. Can you imagine where I would end up being if I lived in Turkey right about now? And I've been to Turkey before. I don't think I'll ever fly through there again uh, because I really realize that I would definitely be the next on their target. Uh, concluding here, I wanted to kind of share with you this here from uh, Lorenzo's site on Already Happen. He's showing this video here, and we saw, I saw the report yesterday come out. They're saying that a Sukhoi 27 flew dangerously close to one of our U.S. planes there that are spy, that's spying on Crimea right now. Uh, I did get to look at the coordinates of that actual flight path. 
it, no doubt probably over international waters, but certainly in a uh, place to where they can see what Russia is doing right now because they're getting ready to go to war against Russia and Russia doing the uh, drills with the S-400 system here just earlier this past week. Uh, we see Russia's military building up in other areas, uh, more war games going on all across the Baltic. And of course, down here in the Black Sea here, uh, we get this Sukhoi 27 that does. And it is dangerously close, flying right there in front of the path of this uh, 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 U.S. Uh, spy plane there. So no doubt that was something for a cause of uh, very concern for the U.S., and, and rightfully so, it was dangerously close. I don't think you really have to fly in front of a spy plane to let them know that you don't want them in that area there. Just the very presence of the Sukhoi 27 should be enough to deter the person not to want to fly there. But the plane did, when I looked at the flight path, uh, it doesn't show it on this here, they actually fly the coast all the way back down through here and come back again. Uh, I don't think it's as far south as what they show here on the map here because when I looked at the actual flight path, it was closer to the island, but no doubt was in international waters. I don't think that the U.S. Uh, broke that issue there. Uh, Ukraine, Kiev Post is also reporting that they have now tested a new cruise missile. Uh, don't forget, Ukraine did have a lot of nuclear weapons at one time, and I'm sure there are still nuclear weapons uh, available there. But Ukraine now has developed their own ICBM, and this ICBM is able to take out warships, pretty much anything that Russia would have, uh, as well as uh, being able to tar uh, target Donetsk and Luhansk region. That is going to ump the ante. That is definitely stepping up uh, in technology. It is based off of an old Russian uh, missile that was developed by Russia back in 2003, so it's not too old. It is state of the art there, and it could definitely change the war on the ground in eastern Ukraine once this thing is armed. If we go in this direction, we are definitely looking at an all out war. I'm Stephen Banoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling indeed the things that are happening in the world uh, do if you're blessed by this broadcast please support the work we're doing you can visit us at israelinewslive.org donate online you can also mail us here in florida or in the czech republic uh, if you want to mail in florida it's the noon institute 82 97 Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442, right there on the bottom of your screen. Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. If you desire to do it in Europe, because we do have some uh, followers in Europe as well that help us out keeping the broadcast on the air, it is, of course, the Noon Institute. It is P.O. Box 46, 15006, Praha 56, Czech Republic, and we thank you and really thank you for your support and keeping our broadcast on the air. God bless you and shalom. Very interesting message coming out here shortly.